Hello, everybody, and welcome to GPAT Channel 5, The Wave, out of Greenville High School in the Greenville City building. Alex Warner here, along with our videographer Nick Schmidt. Also, we have Rob Halls and his friend Jonathan from IMTV. As we start a series of four shows concerning those buildings that are going to be closed down with the advent of the new K-8 building here in the Greenville City School District. This building was first started in 1923. The first class started in the fall of 1924. This is the fourth building here as we're at the junior high building here on Central Avenue. Fourth building that served as a high school for the Greenville City School District. First class that graduated was 1925 and if you count this year's seventh grade class who will graduate in 2022 there will have been 98 classes of students have gone through this facility and as near as we can figure over 20,000 students over the course of these years have walked the halls here at what was Greenville High School now for many years has been Greenville Junior High and with us now is the man who's the last principal of this building here on Central I guess we could say Central and third no central and fifth I'll get my building straight here and this is Chris Mortensen and Chris you know uh, wrapping things up here we're gonna be moving out to new building here in just a few months oh absolutely we're really excited about the move the opportunities that are gonna be there for us and so uh, really excited about all the things that we can see happen out there now in a few months everybody moves out to that new K to 8 building and middle school will be just one wing of it correct that's correct. We're on Egeneran. We're on the right-hand side. Okay. And most of the uh, teaching staff will all be moved out. Have they had a chance to go and look at new rooms yet, or is that something still coming? We're taping this at the end of September. Well, I've taken a couple tours myself and, and saw it at different stages, but um, the teachers went out for one visit, and during that time frame, the, the rooms were, were pretty well set. They were putting in some closets and things like that. The, um, so they got a chance to see that. They didn't see things that were finalized and to know exactly where their rooms are. Okay. What we're going to do is then we're going to have a series of four shows, each of the buildings, which would be South, Woodland East, as well as the Junior High. We're going to take a group of former students and reminisce as we walk the halls of these buildings. Uh, and hopefully you folks will enjoy this because I'm sure a lot of you out there watching the show have memories of your own. And so we're going to take a look at some of the different things. And uh, there'll probably be some memories that are worth remembering and others that maybe <laughs> we don't want to express here on the air. But we'll, we're going to have a real good time going around. I'm going to start things off here, Chris. Uh, you know, this office building and then the principal's office here I told some of the folks that'll be going around with us my very first memory I was about four years old and for a lot of you out there you know that my uh, grandfather Paul Warner senior was the principal at this building for 25 years from 1929 to 1954 and I think my very first memory and I, I mean literally my very first memory was probably playing under the desk in the principal's office when I was about four years old and uh, there were tell tales about my grandfather over the years and, and we'll talk about that a little bit as we go on around so anyhow uh, we're glad you could join us here we're going to introduce the people that are going to tour the building with us Greenville High School graduates and we'll come back in just a minute and talk to them as you watch this show as we take a tour of the junior high building here in the Greenville City School District we'll be back in just a moment back here at the main office at the Greenville Junior High and uh, with us we have seven former students that went through the halls here at the junior high building and some of them it was the high school building at that time and so we're going to pass the mic around let them introduce themselves and then as we tour the building uh, each one of them will have an opportunity as uh, the occasion arises to talk about some of the memories they have while students here so we'll start right here with this young lady Hi, I'm Kathy Rhodes O'Dell, graduated in 1967. I was here the first year that it became a junior high building, and I was an eighth grader then. I'm Krista Schultz Swenson, I graduated in 1988. I'm Rosalie Warner Schultz, I graduated in uh, 51, and my nickname was Rose. I'm Shirley Hufford. Minsterman, and I graduated in 1955. I'm Jim Oliver. I graduated in 1954, and my father was a teacher here, and I took a bunch of classes from him. He, he didn't cut me any slack. <laughs> I'm Vannis Lepart Brumbaugh, and I graduated, I hate to say this, in 1948. Um, and then I came back here years and years later and uh, taught for a while before they and then they moved me out to high school and I taught there too 
It's a great place, and I'm going to give you guys a quiz. Um, you have to give me the answer, and then you can count. How many steps are from this floor to the third? How many of you know? I used to run up those because the juniors and seniors were on the top floor, and these seventh, eighth graders were down here. Anybody know? Well, you can count them today, and you'll find out. <laughs> I'm Nikki. I'm Nikki Fosnot Neely, and I graduated in 1986. So you can see we have a kind of a spread as far as you know years that people attended here, and we want to do that on purpose because everybody has different experiences, and especially the difference between being a high school student and then going through as, as junior high students. So we're going to step outside in the hallways here. We're going to take a stroll down memory lane as we go down toward the cafeteria here on the first floor of the Greenville Junior High School building, and we'll do that in just a second. I'm going to start down the Central Avenue side here of the first floor at the junior high building. And folks, I, I don't know, is everybody, I think these are the original lockers, Chris, is that what you said? That is correct. So these lockers, and they, amazingly enough, they still open. <laughs> they've been painted, but they've been here since 1924. So my gosh, it really, well, some of them close and some of them don't. But Vanis, you were saying that when you were in school, girls, boys? The girls' lockers were on this side, and the boys were on that side. The girls' restrooms are on this side, and the boys on that side, too. Okay, and I didn't know that. I, I had no idea. That's, that's, that's something I just didn't know. And, and you're telling me then, too, that uh, one thing I also, I've never figured out why all the rooms on this side were even, and all the rooms on the Fifth Street side were, what, odd, right? Yeah, do you remember that? Boys were odd. Boys are odd. Yes. I think Vanis is right. It's because boys are odd in junior high. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Anyhow, so as we take the walk down through here, if anybody has anything you want to say, they remember anything they got in trouble for or anything they're really proud of, let me know as we walk on down here. So we're on the even number side, the girls' side here on the first floor. So let's come on down this way. I tell you what, Mr. Mortensen, you've done a fine job. The, the hallways look nice and clean and everything here. Freshly waxed. That would be the custodians. That would be the custodians that did that. <laughs> and I see also, now this was after all of us went through, the eighth grade classes are the ones that take the trip to Washington every year, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And but we'll continue. Us, we didn't get to no. We'll continue to do that, and uh, we enjoy that trip every year. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all too old. I think that started in the... Uh, 19 not early 90s if I'm not mistaken something like that so anyhow let's come on down we're gonna come out here to the uh, the cafeteria and I know that a lot of people uh, food fights in the cafeteria anybody nobody <laughs> you know is that on the inside you when I was in school, you never knew what was behind those doors because it was all janitors. Today, they've made those janitor closets and those secret places that we didn't know what was stored there into offices. Mm -hmm. Some of them are windowless, uh, windowless, and uh, but it's creepy to see that side, you know, alive. <laughs> you know, one thing about this building too: this building was designed to fit in this triangle formed by Fifth Street and Central Avenue, right? Wasn't that where the teachers went to smoke? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> no? Do you remember that? Probably back in the day. <laughs> when I was teaching, it was the custodian's room right there. Oh, okay. That was the smoker. And then there was a little, you could go through there and I think get to the furnace room. But just in case you smoke kind of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what, what's a, another thing unusual about this building is that not only the shape of it to fit in this triangle, but then also with that open courtyard in the middle. And I know that's kind of gotten a little overgrown over the years here. Uh, but at that time, it was supposed to bring natural light in to all, all sides of the building from the inside, which was kind of cool at the time. And we'll take a look at that. Also, I think we're going to eventually go down into the basement here, uh, take a look at the furnace room. How many people have been in the furnace room here before? Oh, we're going to go down and see where the devil lives down in there, I tell you. <laughs> okay, well, let's go on down here. Let's hit the cafeteria down here. We're here in one half of the cafeteria at uh, the junior high building, and I know uh, some of us, there were always two parts of the cafeteria with the kitchen in between. But before that, so Rosie, what was this? This was just a, a one-room cafeteria, correct? Right, uh-huh. And then, did you, ha you had open lunches back when you were in high school, correct? You didn't have to stay here to eat. Oh, no, no. And uh, 
my boyfriend, husband, uh, always took me to the Colmore and we had uh, meatloaf and mashed potatoes and gravy and I forget what else. <laughs> you say the Colmore Tea Room is just around the corner here on 4th Street, correct? It's yeah. over there where uh, Greenville National uh, Loan and uh, the uh, lawyers, law, law office. Law office. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Jim, did you go eat out quite a bit or what did you do? Uh, I ate up here and then I'd go up to the hamburger shop. You had two lunches? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, depending on the days, and sometimes I'd eat here and sometimes up there. Yeah. Shirley, do you remember how was the food back in the day? To tell you the truth, I was one of those that scattered. I had a friend that several of us would gather at a hamburger shop, call more tea room, spread it around. How long did you folks have for lunch then? I mean, it wasn't far to walk to some of these places. What, you have an hour maybe? We did have an R. Uh -huh. Okay, something like that. Of course, by the time Chris had got here and stuff. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I just remember packing my lunch every day and sitting in this room. Very boring. You know, very, yeah. I mean, I don't remember anything really spectacular. They sound like they had a good time. But, yeah, we weren't allowed to leave as far as I remember. Do you, Nikki, well, remember? Especially junior high students at the time. He had some of these older 16 and 17-year-olds. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. How much did you say it cost? for a lunch up here? 25 cents, but see what we would do, we would maybe skip lunch and save our 25 cents and then we would go to the Green Villa, oh. which was now where the flower shop is across from the courthouse. And, <laughs> um, you know, once a week and we'd get a grilled cheese sandwich and that took practically our whole, um, you know, savings for the week to get that and a Coke <laughs> and a flavored Coke. But what they did during that hour, usually we had activities in the gym. We'd have dances and um, you have to teach the boys how to jitterbug and everything. And um, we would have, um, that's where we had our intramural sports. We'd have volleyball, we'd play mm -hmm. basketball, we had gymnastics and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So there was something going on. Something Didn't going have on. Time to eat. Didn't have time to eat. Yeah, Nikki, anything Well, you if we had extra money after school, we would have gone up to Bonfiglio's probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. So something, don't change just the destination. <laughs> um, and what I remember most eating in here is the square pizza on oh, Fridays, you know, yeah. that that was, yeah. that was good stuff, really yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, anything about this? Fish on Fridays. Oh, yeah. Fish on Fridays. Yeah. If, you were, if you weren't Catholic and you didn't like fish, you were in trouble, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, and if I remember, this used to also be, was this a study hall at one time? Does anybody remember that? I know we had two study halls upstairs we'll take a look at, but. I think we used to first, we used to first study halls. I think. Yeah. Overflow. Uh, yeah, we about had to, and I, I tell you why. Kathy and I were classmates in '67, and when we were here, it was a seven, eight, nine building, right. and at that time we had almost 900 students in this building. And Mr. Morton, he said, right now you've got a little less than 400 here. Right, about 367. Yeah, so you know, just a little over a third of what we had back. In the good old days, I guess you'd say. But anyhow, so also one thing that's unique about this room then is, and we'll get pictures of this as, you know, later on, are the murals here on the wall. And we want to talk about those just a little bit. Does anybody remember those murals being here when they were in school? Mm -hmm. I don't know what exactly. You know what year they went in exactly? Yeah. Well, you guys, I don't, re they were here when you were here. I don't know if they, were they here, Shirley, when you were here also? Okay. And these are the uh, paintings of the, you know, commemorating the Treaty of Greenville and the history of the f fort and things of that nature. And uh, what's going to happen to these then, Chris? Well, they're going to leave them up when we first exit the building, and then they're going to have a crew come in before uh, things are done to start the demolition, and they're going to try to restore them right there on the wall before they move them over to the high school. Mm -hmm. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they'll be placing that main stairwell at the uh, high school building, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. And it'll be a nice piece for there. You know, one thing that uh, I just found out not too awfully long ago either was the fact that in the paintings, I have a relative in there. He's a seventh cousin, and he's in the main painting uh, in the middle, and he's in the buckskins on the right. His name was William Wells. He was kidnapped by the Indians, and then later uh, not only fought with the Indians against Anthony Wayne's troops, but then he converted back over and became an advisor to Anthony Wayne. And people think, well, the Warners have been around forever. It has to be off the Warner side. No, it's off my mother's side from Missouri. And it tracks back, and so William Wells, and he's also in this painting over here where they have uh, the five main uh, people involved in the Treaty of Greenville. And, uh, 
so he's my seventh cousin, which I didn't know, and maybe I'm not proud of. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're going to go upstairs now on the second floor and uh, take a look at the gym and some other things up there as we take our tour here as we continue uh, here at the Greenville Junior High School building. We'll be back in just a moment. Yep. As we work our way up to the second floor here on today's tour, uh, one thing we want to take a look at, the stairs here. Terrazzo, these are the original stairs from the spring or fall of 1924, and it's amazing. They're still in good shape, but boy, you can feel as you walk up these steps how many students have gone up here because they're starting to get a groove in what's really hard material. And so think of how many people have gone up and down these steps, not only students, but people back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, coming to ball games and things of that nature, different activities here at the school. And you understand why they've worn these grooves in these, uh, in these stairwells. And it's, it's too bad. And you've got, I mean, this was solid workmanship back then. In fact, this is the whole building solid workmanship. If I'm not mistaken, it's like four to six bricks thick all the way around. They don't build them like this anymore, do they, folks? And you know, you've got marble here for the, for the stanchions at the end of the stairs. And uh, it's just a building that, uh, considering it's been here for over 90 years, it's held up very well. So we're gonna go up these steps without hopefully anybody getting hurt. And then we're gonna take a look at the uh, gym here at Greenville Junior High School. We've moved into the gym gymnasium here on the second floor of the junior high building. And uh, Chris, uh, of course we have a lot of echo here today. <laughs> Chris, truly a unique type of gym. And back in 1924 when this opened, it was, it, by all accounts, I've read some uh, literature and some write-ups in newspapers, this was considered the Pearl of Dark County. Not only the building, but also this gym because for years and years, county basketball tournaments were held here. A unique type of structure right here. Absolutely. It, it was state-of-the-art at that time frame, and, and a floating gym like this, you would not see it. Yeah, because we're not on solid ground here, are we? That's correct. Actually, the way it's designed is allow it to be able to have some give. Yeah. All right. Now, Kathy, you said you had a story or something you wanted to relate here about this, Jim? I do. What I remember are those dark, dingy, dank girls' shower rooms in which we had to change into these horrific, <laughs> jolly green, giant green, <laughs> short-legged jumpsuits for gym class and then we'd come up the steps and the curtain would be pulled. We had segregated gym classes. The girls were on this side and the boys were on that side. And you know what, if that seemed dim and dungeon, or you know, dark. dark and dim to you and dead at that time, that was 40, no, oh my God, that was almost 50 years ago, wasn't it? I don't even wanna go down there, this, and we won't, yeah. Now Nikki, you're the gymnast in the group. How about gym classes up here? having gym classes up here. I remember us having gymnastics and I do remember classes being segregated sometimes but I remember it was always open for gym, for dodgeball because you know the boys threw pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. And you know what as I came up here today about an hour or about half an hour before school let out today guess what they were playing? Dodgeball. dodgeball. <laughs> I love that game. I love that game. Chris any memories up here? I do remember the shower rooms being dark and dingy, and I think we had problems with a few bats down there the years I was here. <laughs> I do remember that, so yes. Rosie? I don't remember the uh, green... Gym jump. suits? No, I think I remember maybe white, white shorts, but I don't remember the top. And then I remember those um, horses, you know, like you set up to jump over. Mm -hmm. I remember doing that. Yeah, did they have a trampoline up here then at that time too? I, I know we had one in the yeah, mid-60s. I remember those horses that they, you would jump over. Yeah. Of course, now, Vanis, you were a cheerleader up here, correct? Okay. And this place was hopping, wasn't it? It was packed. And during the tournaments, when they had the tournaments, uh, the GAA, Girls Athletic Association, ran a concession stand in the hallway, if you can believe that. We brought ice tubs, all this sort of thing. But that's how we made our money. Yeah, right. But um, that was a real active um, group of women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, surely your class is one of the more famous athletic classes in Greenville High School history, the class of 55. Not only won the MVL undefeated in football, but then also turned around and won the MVL in basketball. We were good, weren't we? <laughs> At least the boys were. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, I think I just broke the mic here for Rob. Anyhow, yeah, that was, that was a big year, 1955. Yeah, very much so. Jim, uh, how about your memories here? Well, I have a very good memory. I was a sophomore in Ohio State. I came back in February for a weekend. I came up here to watch a basketball game. I was sitting right up there, and this girl that I knew from church came up and says, is this spot taken? I said, no. We were married 48 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, there's a lesson to be learned there somehow, and I'm not sure what it is. But. <laughs> no, very, very fond memories. You know, that's the one thing, too, that's unusual about this place is the balcony up here. Now, really, there should be only maybe one or two rows. I think at one time they had two rows. But, Vanish, you said it. I'm not kidding. There were six rows. They were packed up there. And then the doorways were packed. The fire department would never permit that today. But you know what? We survived. Yeah, we survived. <laughs> and, of course, Rosie, when you were in school, they didn't have rollout bleachers. They had to take bleachers down at the end of every game for yes, class. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I remember yeah. those old wooden bleachers and everything like that. Yeah, in fact, there's one, another one of the early memories I've had in this place was down here as you came in the West 5th Street entrance, came up uh, when I was probably maybe five years old at the most. We'd always throw our coats in that uh, window well over there, and I'd sit right there on the corner of that uh, of the gym floor here and watch some of those ball clubs back through the uh, mid to early or mid to late 50s, especially. And that was one memory. Of course, the team benches were always over here along this wall in the alley, over behind Memorial Hall. And we've got we've had this clock now for quite a while. But how many remember the clock that was here? It was one time. It was a circular clock. Had a minute hand went around. And when it got to the last minute, does anybody remember what color it turned? It turned pink. So you knew you were in the last minute. And there was a clock at either end, and then it's just been replaced by a newer clock here recently. But anyhow, a lot of good memories here. Like you said, the, the segregated uh, the curtain, the segregated classes. And I know the boys, we'd always kind of throw dodgeballs on the other side so we could run around the curtain and check the women out at that time. But uh, anyhow, yeah, just a tremendous amount of memories up here. And like Vanis was talking about, they'd have the county high school basketball tournament here, and they'd line up for hours, hours before the doors even open to get in here. And those were, uh, of course, there were a lot of different teams that way too. One Frank Monroe it was Franklin, and it was Monroe, and it was Hollinsburg, and Gettysburg, and Palestine. So a lot of different clubs that came in here and this place just it just got packed and probably never held more than probably eight or nine hundred people legitimately. Probably put about fifteen hundred in here at times I'm sure. So anyhow this is the uh, junior high uh, gym and as you can tell things have changed a little bit. First of all there's a volleyball court traced on the floor here and then the three-point line came into effect about 25 years ago and this court's not built to handle a three-point line so it only goes so far down in the corners and if you're trying to hit a three-point shot from the corner you're about three feet out of bounds. So, anyhow we're going to continue the stroll around here on the second floor and take a look at some of these classrooms and see how they evoke some memories here as you watch our show on the Greenville Junior High here on the Wave Channel 5 and we'll be back in just a moment. Well we're here on the uh, second floor now in the classroom section here at the junior high building and we'll just kind of pass the mic around any particular memories of anything on the uh, second floor and uh, also third floor any classroom memories Kathy well it was either in 201 or 200 or 202 one of those rooms and but the um, it was the day that Kennedy was assassinated right I'm sorry, I'm going to get choked up over that a little bit. I was sitting in Tom Francis um, science class, and um, he was just, we were all kind of in shock, of course, but he as an adult was just crippled. And he, I remember him saying, he closed his book and he said, study hall now. He couldn't continue teaching. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was, uh, of course, November 22nd of 63, and I was in French class, if I remember, and you, heard the, you could hear the bells of St. Mary's Church start to ring, and then an announcement came over the PA system. That's one of those days you just, you just don't forget, right? Just don't forget that. Jim, you got anything up here on this floor? Of course, your, of course your dad was here for years. Well, uh, 203 taught German geometry, physics, journalism, taught physics up on the third floor. But I remember from kindergarten, they had kindergarten next door. 
and I got out before uh, the kids here got out. So I would come over here and sit in his classroom till he was ready to go home, and I would ride home with him. <laughs> Lived down on the end of Central. So from kindergarten on, I was very familiar with this building. Kindergarten was in Memorial Hall then? Mm -hmm. it, really? Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, and again, over the years, this building has housed, what, sixth, seventh, eighth grade? I think Krista will tell us a little bit about, she was here in sixth grade, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right. Yeah, Rose, any memories up here of any classes or anything? Anything you can repeat in public? No. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, Miss Dieter. Mm -hmm. she, I think she had one of these right rooms here. along in here. Yeah, so. I think the one right behind us. Biology. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I remember that uh, room. In general science, yeah. yeah. Miss yeah. Dieter became my step grandmother. She yeah. married my grandfather yeah. after was, my grandmother passed. She away. was a, uh, a friend of my mother in law's. Yeah. Hey, we might clear that up too. Her maiden name's Warner, and of course I'm Warner, but no relation, right? Oh, I bet down the line somewhere we're... You, you think we're kissing cousins from way back? We could be. Okay. Could well, let's, be. Not, let's not make that known to most people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Shirley, you got any no memories here? Okay, sixth grade and anything else? Yes, um, I was here, we were trying to figure out what years. Probably 81, 82 was my sixth grade year, I think, if I'm doing the math right. So I was on the third floor in sixth grade, and then seventh and eighth the other floors but we were the only year they did that they closed north school that year and decided to put us all here so there had to be there were 320 in my class so there had to be close to a thousand students here that year right. um and i don't remember it being super packed but yet i was totally on the third floor that you know for sixth grade yeah. um and so i guess it didn't go well since they only did it <laughs> one year but i have good memories of sixth grade i remember if we were to be up there i remember what end of the hallway i was on we were in pods so we had three teachers and i remember the end of the i was on that side and uh, the three different classrooms I had so I have good memories from that year and then I also remember Mr. K's science room down here and the Bunsen burners and <laughs> liked a uh, science class I remember down that hallway I remember having um, language arts and history I remember Mr. Powers for history okay. class really enjoyed that and well, with uh, that many kids up here then there must have been 25, 30 kids in every class easily. Had to have been because of lack of classrooms. They had to put a lot of kids together. Yes, they were probably pretty large, yeah. um, at least 25, yeah. I would say. Uh, yeah. Had to have been. yeah, Nikki? Yeah, I remember I had Mr. K also, and I love that classroom with the tables and the Bunsen burners and the expensive lens tissue, which was toilet paper, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think I was in that classroom when there was... Um, and it's hard, I don't know, if it's just coming back, but there was, a, there was a walkout at the high school because of a school levy or something. And the high school students, I think, walked out and they walked down our street. And I think I remember seeing that out of that classroom window. I, I think it was about 19, no, it was 1981. And it was 81, I think. I graduated in 86 from the high school, so that'd be that'd about be right. about seventh grade. Yeah, something like I think that. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's funny you remember that. Yeah, Vanis? Oh, I'll go to the next floor. Oh, she's got to hold off for the main floor. Because you said at that time when Vanis was in school, her senior, junior and senior years were on the top floor. This was segregated for freshmen and sophomores in seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, those piddly little seventh and eighth graders and everything. It's cool to take see all the advanced courses because you go to the third floor early. You have to go all the way to the third floor, yeah. And that's where we're going to head. But to get there, we're going to go up the main stairway and let's, uh, let's kind of go up the main stairwell. We'll take a look at a couple of murals that are painted on the walls up there and then talk about all the times up and down these, this central stairway here at the junior high and we'll take a look at that in just a second we're here on the third floor landing of the uh, central stairwell here at the junior high building and uh, a couple things we want to talk about and then we'll reminisce about uh, different uh, activities I guess that happened up here on the third floor there are two murals here halfway between the second and third floors and uh, Nick and uh, Rob will get pictures of that later on one of them is the uh, 20 townships of Dark County, and I'm not sure when that was painted, but if it came along with the one of the city of Greenville, it had to be painted between 19, 
1940 and 1951. And you might ask, why do, why do I know that? Well, if you take a look at this portrait over here of the city of Greenville, it still has the city building on the traffic circle, and that came down, I think, in 51, 52, something in there, if I'm not mistaken. But it also has on there, then, the Altar of Peace, and the Altar of Peace wasn't in place until about 1940. So sometime between 1940, 1950, 52, something in that neighborhood, that was painted. And you know what's funny about this? They misspelled Alder on Alder of Peace. They spelled it A-L-T-E-R, and I think it's A-L-T-A-R, if I'm not mistaken. And also it has uh, Greenville spelled with that third E, like Fort Green, so Greenville, but it has in there, it has the junior high, it has South School, has the old East School building, which for a while was the high school for Greenville City Schools, but for some reason they left North School off of that portrait. I'm not sure why, because it was of the elementary buildings, that was one of the first, because it was a 1901 building. But anyhow, just two murals, and Chris, you say you're not sure what's going to happen to those? I know that they said that in terms of value for the, those things, they really were just more of a sentimental. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with that, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do with those, but I know that they'll, they'll find some way to preserve them. Well, let me ask you this, because they're going to have an auction, aren't they, of different things, uh, different uh, fixtures and uh, desks and tables and things up here after the building closes down. Do you know when that's going to be by any chance? But that's what they're playing on, right? Now, I don't know when it's going to be, but I know that we're the last building in the series of everything that's going to happen. So everything kind of flows and comes this direction and ends up here for the, the end result of, of what's going to occur. Yeah. So there might be some people out there that might be interested in purchasing these murals and everything because they are an important part of the history of this, this school building. Okay, Vanis, you said something about the third floor. You wanted to hold on to the third floor here because... Oh, because Junior and senior year up here, correct? I'm going to pass the science room down here. Mr. Metzger's physics room's right here. His okay. chemistry and physics room. And I'll tell you what happened. Because Mr. Detling, whom you don't remember, but he wasn't the most popular teacher because he'd never had any children of his own. So he didn't really know how to handle us. Okay. But right over here, his room is right next door. So you have to come in here because this was my physics room, my well, you're going to get out of camera range, so just tell us about only, it. Oh, well, there were only three girls in my physics class. That's probably why I took it. Now, I like those courses, but in that room, there's a door that's, um, and maybe if you've been in the room right next door, it's, the door's still there. So Harvey Pierce, who became an architect, he had the big tuning fork, and he hit it really hard, so it was vibrating, and he put that thing right on his door. Mr. Detling, you've never seen him run so fast. He came over there. Who did that in storming into the <laughs> physics room? And there's Harvey, who became successful. Became but very successful. Oh, it was so funny. And every time I go in that room, I've subbed. I always think, you know, that door. And well, I keep thinking Mr. Detling's going to come in. If my kids are no very noisy. But it was so funny. Yeah, yeah Nikki, anything up here on third floor? Any classes or anything? Um, I remember it's a long way to come to have to put locker tags up. Yeah. That oh, he didn't have very long, yeah. He didn't really like to have people who were on the third floor to have to put their locker tags up because that was a long way to go. And um, the other thing I remember doing up here was laminating posters for teachers. Like, we, they didn't have the big laminating machine, so you'd put down contact paper and smooth it out for them or something. That's how I seem to have spent my time. I don't know. <laughs> Chris, anything up here on third yeah, floor? I mean, maybe once I go around the different rooms, I'll have some more memories. But uh, like I said, I just remember sixth grade being up here and, yeah, I had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you were the party girl up here, weren't you? <laughs> Rosie, anything? I think uh, um, Mr. Morrison's typing class uh, was on this floor, and I hated typing, and I don't know why I took it, <laughs> and I didn't do well in it. Hunt and peck, one finger at a time? Yes. And, and still do? Yeah, I don't even do it now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jim, you got anything up here on the third floor? Come on out here where they can see you. Um, my dad had his physics class over here. And then I took chemistry here from Mr. Mahan, and he made chemistry so interesting. That's what I uh, went to Ohio State for, is in chemistry. Did they have a full lab at that time up here then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Do, do they have, is it what's in there now? Still in there. Do we still have lab facilities? We don't have the Bunsen burners and the water supply, do we? bring out on occasion and and do some small stuff that the group can watch but they don't 
allow them to be able to basically do it themselves anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's probably probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. Kathy, you have anything up here on the third floor? Something about your dad. Too. I do. Um, one day I was sitting in room, I think it was 309, it might have been 307, but I think it was 309, and I happened to glance up into the lower left-hand corner of the blackboard, and there were my dad's initials and his year of graduation carved into the blackboard. And I went home that day, I couldn't wait to get home. I went busting in the house after I got off the bus and I said, Dad, you carved your initials in the blackboard at the junior high building. And he said, no, I didn't. But my dad could never tell a lie with a straight face, so I knew it was him. <laughs> and I said, who else could have been WDR 44? And then he grinned and he never did admit it, but I know it was him. <laughs> and so my wish is that when the demolition, before the demolition occurs, I get that little chunk of blackboard with my dad's initials in it and the year of his graduation. Very cool. I hope you do. I hope you do. Yeah. I've got one thing. We're talking about sciences and uh, classes and so forth. When we were here, and probably some of you had Lauren Cludy, yes. Mr. Cludy for science, and, and boy, it's hard to believe we did this now, but we'd be in his science class and we'd take mercury and you'd put it on the floor and you'd just roll around little balls of mercury, chase it all over the floor. He had a toy cannon in there also that he'd experiment with, something about action and reaction, he'd shoot that cannon off and it'd shake the building. And uh, he's also the one that took a bunch of us. We went down in the tunnels. Those of you, probably, some of you probably been there that's watching this, but there are tunnels under here where the heat ducts and some other, the utilities work, go through there. We'd go through those tunnels and boy, I tell you what, you felt like you were going back in time about 500 years at least, as well as going up on the roof and threw water balloons down and different things. How fast can a feather go compared to a bowling ball, you know, that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, that big ball and we'd touch it and our oh, hair yeah. would stand Everything straight out. Six, static electricity. Static electricity, that's, that's right. what we learned. Yeah, there's a lot of things that probably happened back in the day that uh, probably frowned on right now. Yeah, truly. <laughs> Definitely frowned on right now. <laughs> uh, anything else we want to talk about up here on the third floor? Everybody's okay? Shirley, you have anything about third floor? Okay. Well, we're going to go back down the stairwells here, and we'll kind of wrap things up down on the first floor here. And uh, we're glad you could join us here as we take this tour of the junior high building, and we'll wrap things up in just a minute. We'll finish things up here today in our tour of the junior high building uh, down here on the first floor in the central stairwell. And uh, we'll have everybody, if they have just a final few words or memories they want to share. Vanis, you have something. Well, I was teaching here and my room was up on 137 and my course was general business and business, business math. And it was during Earth, Earth Day, the first Earth Day that they celebrated. Um, my project for the students was to pick up trash and so we had, Mr. Hosoffel was the principal, so I got permission to have a big fence put in here. And during the class, they had to go out and pick up paper and things that were not in the alleys, but that were on the street and where people walked by. And they brought that stuff in and they dumped it here. And in, um, it, it was a week long project and we had it almost in the ceiling of trash in, in here because I had five general business classes. And I was taking a course at Miami University for grad school and this uh, prof was really into Earth Day and she wanted this project done a certain way but then I had it my way and she was so impressed that I incorporated this into the teaching that I got an A plus on that. Well look but, at you. But there was litter <laughs> but there was litter clear up there here which I don't think Mr. Morrison would allow me to do it today. <laughs> I say there are a lot of things people got away with way I back know, when. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, you got any final memories here of uh, your days at the junior high? Um, well, I do remember that we always thought of this as kind of as our whole campus because, you know, we have, and they still do band over at Memorial Hall, and we had study hall in Memorial oh. Hall, too, as well, and so you were always going back and forth, and um, just just that that I always thought of junior high as kind of both buildings in my mind. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Did you have any classes over at Memorial Hall then? The two of you must have. Yeah, surely. I spent four years with home ec over there and four years in band, so I was running back and forth every day. All right. Yeah. Hey, and you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, 
they didn't add that addition on for like FFA or AG, I should say, and Woodshop and so forth. I, I read someplace until about 1955. So you were already out of here, and that might have been your senior year when they added on behind Memorial Hall. And I remember it. You don't remember that? That's right. Yeah, yeah. We had the home ec, uh, Mrs. Palmer. Mrs. Uh, Palmer? And well, Creamer, uh, I had uh, Oprah. Uh, Oprah, what was her name? Yeah, o Orpha. Orpha, Orpha Palmer. Yeah, I had her four years. I loved home ec. <laughs> <laughs> they had the whole kitchen and everything, oh, bunch yeah. of stoves and everything. Oh, oh yeah, uh -huh, all of it. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a required course, wasn't it? And did you have to do that? that? Was the first year that they cut it, really? I did not have it, and Mom loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they cut it the year I came through. I don't know, did you have it seventh and eighth? Yeah, we had home ec and, and we had sewing and we had cooking. Yeah. So. Right. And the boys had wood shop and metal shop, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But I do remember going to Memorial Hall for band with Mr. Griffith, because um, I remember it was always hard to get to the bus in time. If I had to run over and get my trumpet, I was always wishing I had a flute that I could stick into my locker instead of a trumpet. So, yeah, but lots of good memories in Memorial Hall, too. Yeah, yeah we, we've kind of neglected Memorial Hall there a little bit. You had something else, Vanessa, you said? Nope. That wasn't required. Yeah, Kathy, final thoughts? Well, but Room 100 is, um, or was, when I was here in junior high, where the guidance counselors were. And our guidance counselors were Mr. Fazek and Mrs. Opal Lease. And when I came back here as an employee in 1979, Opal Lease, who had been my guidance counselor, was now my working cohort because the school nurse's office was in room 100. Okay, so you ran the gamut, student, uh, yeah, school nurse, yeah, 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 colleague. Jim, final things? Well, I think I had shop down there in the basement of Memorial Hall, Bob Hawes. I think I was, you know, I was, yeah, I think I was junior high. Okay, so that's where it was. And Chris, you know, hey, and one thing, we are going to go take a look. We won't put it on camera. We'll take a look, if anybody that wants to, we're going to take a look at the furnace room because you can't believe the size of the boilers and the furnaces and everything there. And uh, I'll, I'll take you down there in a little bit, but we won't get it on camera. I just, I forgot about that. Darn it. Chris, final thoughts? Well, I don't know about trash being down here, but I can tell you that this building, the way it's designed, we have our choir groups come down in here when we get around Christmas time, and they sing, and you can hear it through the whole building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Rob Hawes, our cameraman here from IMTV, Rob said the uh, first thing they did when they bought new pens was go to the third floor landing and drop pens down. And if you look down, it's a straight shot all the way to the first floor, Rob. Is that what you said? Made a nice little explosion, correct? how good your pens were and if you <laughs> happened to be down there, uh, you figured out just how fast you could run. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, we're glad you could join us because there's a lot of memories that we hope we evoke some of them and you viewers out there. And uh, there's so many things we could have talked about today, but time just wouldn't allow us. But we hope you get a taste of what has transpired over the years since 1924, the fall of 24. So we're talking, what is that? 92 years now? I think 92 years since this building opened up. And like we said, this seventh grade class will be the 98th class of students to go through the halls of what was Greenville High School and then later became Greenville Junior High. So we'd like to thank Nikki Neely, class of 86. Did I say that right? Rosalie Schultz, 51. Shirley Minsterman, 55. Krista Swenson, 88. Vanis Broomball, 48. You said it was 84 or 48. Which one was it? Yeah, yeah 84. Kathy O'Dell, 67, 67 for myself, and Jim Oliver for 54, correct? And uh, so we thank you folks for watching, and uh, stay tuned, because we're going to have three other buildings we're going to take a tour with of students that went to those buildings. We're going to do South School, along with Woodland Heights, and then East School. And uh, we hope this uh, just kind of gives you an overview of these buildings as they're being shut down as we move into the new facility. And then also thanks to Chris Mortensen, the last principle of this particular building. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so on behalf of Nick Schmidt, my cameraman, Rob Halls, and John from IMTV, I'm Alex Warner, and we're glad you could join us, and we'll see you here on the next episode here on The Wave, Channel 5. Good night, everybody.